What's in my camera case? That's a question I get asked a lot. What do you put in your camera case? Well, I actually prefer a hard shell case. That's, that's what I usually keep my equipment in. Although I do have a, a backpack as well, and I usually use a low pro backpack. But as far as a hard shell case, I actually prefer the Pelican 1510 series. The, the reason I like this series is because this is the type of size that the airline will allow on the carry-ons. So it, it, it fits perfectly for that. And of course, it's a rolling type of case. You have a pull handle that, um, that you can just drag with you if you like. And, and I'm telling you, the Pelican cases are built strong. I, I don't have any fear of the equipment getting damaged. Um, hey, it's waterproof. I've, I've had it actually in, in pouring rain and have never had any issue of water going inside. It's a very strong case. So today, I'm actually gonna show you the type of equipment that I actually use when I go out on the field. All right, let's take a look. Well, here it is. This is the Pelican 1510 series of uh, hard shell cases. Uh, I'm very happy with these. These are very strong. They're lockable. There's locks, uh, two lock sections that you can put on here and, and keep it secured. There's handles on the side here, handles on the top. This little trolley thing makes it a lot easier to carry around. And there's wheels on the bottom. I don't know if you can see it from here, but there are wheels down here that, uh, that you can drag this around. So it works really good, especially if you're traveling and uh, if you want protection, this is the way to go. But let's take a look and see what's in here. Uh, there is foam on the top, but you can actually get a uh, lid section. I guess it's a, it's a new uh, replacement piece that you take off of this one and then it sticks onto here and has different compartments you can put things in. Uh, I just leave the foam, it's just a little bit easier for me. Batteries, <laughs> batteries are always important. Uh, put it for your flashes, any other devices that I have. I also carry a uh, bubble level if I want to make sure my camera is leveled to the ground. Um, three axis leveler makes it easier. I have more batteries. Let's start over here. This is my trusty Minolta meter. This is the auto meter 4. Actually, this is the auto meter, meter 5F. And uh, it's one that I actually prefer to use. It's, it's quite handy to come in and take a, a measurement uh, using uh, a handheld meter. And, and you'll find a lot of times that this thing will actually give you better readings than uh, if you use a reflective meter that's built into your camera. Plus it's also a flash meter. If you're taking measurements of a flash, you, you have to have one of these things. So highly recommend this or maybe a Sekonic meter. Put that back in the case. As far as other devices I have in here, uh, this is just a bunch of parts, <laughs> uh, a remote system where I can actually trigger my camera with a remote. This thing will go about, I think, 300 feet if I'm not mistaken. There's a receiver and that, that part was, of course, the transmitter. This is the battery charger for my uh, Nikon D850 camera, which we'll see in a moment here. SB800 Nikon flash. Now, this was discontinued a number of years ago, but You'll find that a lot of pros still like the SB800s because they're very powerful units and they're small and lightweight. Newer units tend to be a little bit heavier and bigger. Uh, these still work perfectly fine. So I have a couple of these. Cables, of course. Here's a, uh, here's a remote triggering device. Uh, if you have your camera on a tripod, you'll want one of these things so that you don't actually uh, move the camera by pushing down on the shutter. You can actually use a cable release to do that. This is the XQD card reader. Um, the Nikon D850 actually has a different type of uh, card system. Most people are familiar with the SD cards, but the, uh, here's the Nikon D850. These, uh, these have different type of cards. They're, this is the XD, XQD card, which is a faster card than a typical compact flash card big and heavy just like those but it also has a SD card too and this SD card is actually a little different than what you might be used to there you can see there's actually additional contact points these are very fast cards and uh, this camera is designed to take advantage of that so um, G850 
And I actually don't use the Nikon vertical grip. I actually have a Velo. This is sold through B&H uh, Photo in New York. And the vertical grips, of course, allow you to shoot a vertical shot uh, with a, a secondary uh, sh uh, shutter release. And you also get an additional battery you can put in here. And if you put an adapter, uh, a different type of adapter plate here, you could actually use the larger battery, which then moves the D850 from a 7 frame per second camera to a 9 frame per second camera because the larger battery gives it more power to be able to do that. But I'm using the standard one. As far as lenses here, let's see what I have. This is my trusty uh, 24 to 70. I put this little rubber band here because uh, it's a little trick that I learned uh, from my dad that if you ever get your your UV filters or any other filters stuck on here, you could always put a little rubber band around here. Now if you do that, you get a better grip. It's a lot easier to remove. So I always keep a, 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 a rubber band with me. And the easiest thing to do is just kind of tie this around the, the lens so it's easier to keep there. So every lens that I have actually has a UV filter on there and I, I prefer it. Although I know a lot of pros don't like it because it's like putting another piece of glass in front of the lens which of course could degrade the image quality but the protection that you get in case you know debris comes and hits your lens if you scratch the front of your lens you've lost the lens you scratch a filter you can buy another filter that's that's the main reason I keep the UV filters on, on all of my, my lenses and of course every lens I try to use a lens hood as well and the lens hood basically keeps the glare off of the glass so when sunlight comes down it's gonna hit this it's just like when you're wearing a baseball cap, the visor keeps the, the glare off of your eyes. Same thing for your lenses, so every lens has that. So this is my 24-70 Nikon uh, f2.8 lens. It's probably my workhorse lens. I use that more than anything else. Um, I do have a 60mm 2.8 uh, Nikon macro lens. Now Nikon calls their macro lenses micro lenses, so don't get confused. So if you if you see an ad that says, hey, this is a Nikon micro lens, it's a macro lens, okay? This is good for close-ups. I can shoot very close with this thing. If, if, if this was the subject and this is the lens, I could actually get this close and, and still take that photo. So very good for uh, reproduction purposes. Uh, if you're a photographer that does crime scenes like I used to do, um, kind of a workhorse lens. Moving on here, this is my, this is actually an older lens. This is my uh, 50 millimeter f1.4 lens. So when I need a shallow depth of field shot or I have very low light, I have that ability to use this. This little lens hood, <laughs> this is a collapsible, is designed specifically for this lens. I, I haven't seen too many of these collapsibles. Um, obviously there's not much protection if this thing falls, but but it's, it's easy to pop this thing up. And I've had this probably a good 30 plus years. So I, I, just out of nostalgia, I keep it on it and it works just fine. Moving on, this is the 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8. And again, uh, lens hood. But the, uh, the, the 70 to 200 has gone through a series of different changes uh, there was a VR1, this is the VR2 version. There's a newer version, even more expensive than these now. But uh, I find that I don't really need to change that often on these lenses. I, I make an investment in the lens and it, it basically stays with me for a very, very long time. I've had these lenses for a number of years and I don't have any ch uh, uh, inkling of changing them at the, anytime soon. So even if new lenses come out, I still stick with what I have. This is a remote cable which I can actually uh, attach to the top of my camera and then my flash goes on here so I can actually move my flash in any direction that I want and still be able to trigger it. Flashlight, a very important piece to have. Sometimes you'll find that uh, it's a little too dark. You, you need to see things. Uh, having a flashlight with you is always helpful. This is the 14 to 24 millimeter f2.8 Nikon. This lens is kind of interesting. I use this for real estate photography or any type of uh, shot that requires an ultra wide angle. Uh, you, you can notice here that the lens has a little, oh, what is that, con, con, convex uh, set up here. And that does not give the effect of like a fisheye, even though it kind of looks like it might be because it is kind of bulging here. 
uh, it does not do that, but it's very, very good lens for ultra wide angles. Okay, great for real estate. Let's see what the filter I have here. Okay, this is a polarizing filter. So this allows you to cut down glare. This, that's helpful if I'm shooting things like on the water and I don't want the glare from the water. That would be helpful. Or any type of glass that might have reflections. This one is a, a, a variable density uh, lens. This is a neutral density lens, but it's a variable from Hoya. And so this is basically a very dark gray filter. But this changes. I don't, I don't think we can see it too well on, on the camera here, but uh, maybe you can see my hand through it. I'm not sure my fingers through here. And as I change this, it's actually darkening the effect. Can you see my finger back here? So it's a total variable um, in terms of darkness levels. And that actually will help you if you have too much, uh, too much light. You can actually drop, dial down the light intensity by using this. And you can buy individual filters for this, of course, and they're probably better on the long run, but you know, how many filters are you gonna carry? This is, this is gonna give you an infinite amount of darkness levels, okay? I always carry <laughs> these. These are earplugs that I've had for so long. These uh, actually, as musicians, we usually like to use this in case it's very loud. Every time I go to a concert, I have earplugs on. And I've used this even when I actually started learning how to shoot a gun when I was working in law enforcement. Uh, I use this as earplugs for, for when I'm shooting. But I learned early on in my photography stages that keeping earplugs are important because, uh, for instance, if you're a wedding photographer, the DJ starts playing the music, it's gonna be really loud. And a lot of times we're actually in front of the, the speakers. So having that in your ear protects your hearing, very important. This is, this is a uh, bounce card for your flash. This is made by a company called DEMB, D-E-M-B. Joe DEMB is the person who actually invented this. But basically it's just a bounce card that fits over your, your flash. So you can see it's actually a variable bounce card because there's a hinge here, very smart. And I found that if you use this in conjunction with this, okay, this comes with it, Put this right here, okay? You bounce this straight up, angle this about 45 degrees, angle this back about 45 degrees, you virtually have no shadows. <laughs> no matter what you shoot, you're gonna eliminate a lot of the shadows. So I found that this is actually a very good device. Uh, it's about $40, something like that. And uh, very small and lightweight, easy to carry around. I prefer to use this, all right? Very interesting piece. Evidence rulers. <laughs> uh, when I used to shoot crime scenes, I uh, would need to use rulers to keep the, the, uh, the scale proper. And uh, these have never come out of my camera cases. I've kept this in every camera case I've ever had. Um, I don't know, it's just something part of me. I, I just cannot get rid of this. It's just something I have to have and something that I keep. So. Very important piece here, this is a little hand blower. This blows the dust off of your equipment. Every piece of equipment gets blown out. If I have uh, lenses, for instance, I'll show you this lens in a second here. I would blow out any dust that might be there. Same thing inside your camera. If you have an image sensor, you can blow the dust out with this thing too. Very inexpensive, this is made by a company called Giotos, G-I-O-T-T-O-S. It's called the Rocket Blaster or Rocket blower, something like that, uh, about 10 bucks. Well worth it. I think every photographer should have one in their case. This particular thing is the uh, 16 millimeter fisheye lens for a full frame camera. Uh, this is a, this is a fisheye lens. So this is gonna create that 180 degree view. Kind of an expensive lens. I think the last time I checked, $800, $900, something like that. Very expensive. I haven't had the opportunity to use this much at all uh, since leaving uh, the wedding industry. But every wedding, I would shoot a shot of the, uh, of the venue, and this is going to give me the whole venue. So very good. It doesn't stay on very easily. It's just one of those things you put on top of uh, the, the lens that pops right off. So I put a little rubber band here just to keep it in place. And this is the teleconverter, 1.7 times teleconverter for the Nikon 70 to 200 millimeter lens. 
So this gives me the ability to, to bring that 200 millimeters to about 320 millimeters uh, when I use this. But again, uh, your f2.8 will drop to the equivalent of 2.8 times 1.7, whatever that comes out to be. So you don't have the, uh, the large aperture that you might think if you use one of these. But if you're looking for distance and range, this is a lot easier to carry than a 300 millimeter lens. So it's a good alternative. And of course, <laughs> microfiber cloth to wipe down your lenses and anything else. Uh, always carry some microfiber cloths with you and if you can't find these go to an optometrist they usually have these available for you and of course uh, this is the balanced exposure break card i use this for custom white balancing and i i've always recommended these to my students uh, i had these made specifically in china actually and and brought over here and um this is what keeps my colors consistent. Now, the one thing I don't do is um, standard auto white balance uh, when I'm taking a photo. I, I don't find that that always has the best color, but when I do a custom white balance with this and correct any changes that might be off by a little bit in Lightroom, it gives me the ability to get that color just right. So highly recommend getting some type of white balance device. Okay. And that basically covers everything inside my case. This is what I typically would bring with me anywhere I go. So get a case. It really makes a big difference. So there you have it. That is the Pelican 1510 case and all the equipment that I keep in it. It's a lot of gear, but it's safe in that case, and that's why I use it. Highly recommended. Get yourself one. See you guys next time.